Welcome to this very special Halloween episode here on In Range TV. Today's topic isn't particularly about guns, but it's definitely about a topic we deal with regularly here on the channel. I'm standing in front of the former Danvers State Hospital, otherwise known as the Mental Health Asylum or Insane Asylum. Built in the late 1870s under the Kirkbride Plan, which was a very forward-leaning mental health practice in which they provided the patients open air, sunlight, and an agrarian life in an effort to help heal them, this unfortunately turned into a very terrible place in a very short duration. If you've ever seen the movie Session 9, it was a cult horror film. This was abandoned in 1992, and between 1992 and 2005, when it got gentrified into luxury condos, this was a ruin that spoke to the horrors of what people here were subjected to. And Session 9 is a very interesting film in that it actually historically and accurately represents this building in that state and time. If you're interested in some of that, you should watch that movie definitely. Let's move on and talk about what really happened here at the Danvers State Mental Asylum. So in 2005, developers purchased the property we're standing on today, and they gutted the inside of the Danvers State Hospital, essentially whitewashing the legacy and the historical significance of the internals of the building while leaving the actual superstructure still standing today. But at least in the process, they actually did build this memorial that you see here now. Now this does accurately talk about the history of the building. It talks about the style of the building, the architecture, and the idea that was brought in terms of very early mental health facility that was considered a positive thing at the time. This building was starting to be built in 1874 and finished in 1878 and was housed or designed to house 500 patients with some of the most leading mental health practices of the day. Things that included hydroimmersion therapy, shock therapy, pharmaceuticals, etc. Now those things can still and are to this day used for positive mental health outcomes, but they can also be used as tools of torture and control. And that's a lot of what happened here at Danvers State Hospital amongst many others. Because as the state reduced their funding for this facility, it went from 500 people to over 2,000. 2,000 patients in a place designed for 500. Those tools that were once used to help people were now used to control them. Straight jackets to put them in the basement, drugging them to the point they were no longer conscious, using shock therapy to put them into states of coma, or even up to including lobotomies to make the particularly difficult submissive. Danvers State Hospital, amongst many of these other mental institutions that were state-run, have become nothing more than facilities of terrifying realities of what happened to people who were just labeled mentally ill. They needed help, and they found a prison in torture. So this is the somewhat overgrown path to the second Danvers State Cemetery in regards to what was a satellite facility specifically for women. This one is interesting because it has not been molested like the primary cemetery is that we're going to get to later in the video. But I wanted to show you that this is, while there is a path to this, there's no signs, nothing really indicating that this is here. You have to find it and know that it's here to be able to want to visit it. Now, the ex-patients of Danvers, when it was shut down, were able to garner some funds to help rehabilitate this, and it was at one point completely overgrown, and the local farmers were using it to store rocks and debris, and the cemetery was actually lost. But it has been found and has a fence around it now, and this will represent the, essentially what the original cemetery with the primary amount of bodies actually looks like, or should have looked like, back in the day. So as I said earlier, this is actually the second cemetery related to Danvers State Insane Asylum. But this one represents what the original first cemetery would have looked like before it was altered. And you'll see that these are actually the headstones. I'm standing right here next to number 54. When people were interred here after dying at the asylum, they were not given a headstone with a name. They were given strictly a headstone that looked like this with a number on it. This particular cemetery has 92 to 93 bodies in it and it is definitely the smaller of the two. 
Now, there was some statement from the State Board of Health that they, or Mental Health that they were only using numbers because it was for the privacy of the family because back then having a mental health condition was considered salacious and therefore being associated with someone that was in the asylum was controversial. However, there is definitely a dehumanization element to this being only a number and not a name. And the ex-patients in 2002 rallied together, at least at the first cemetery, to try and put names into the ground. We'll get to there in a minute. This one they have to leave as it is in its current state, but they do have a monument of all the names that are interred here along with these numbers. So this is the totally unmarked path to the original Danvers State Hospital Cemetery number one. You really have to know that this is here to find it. You walk past their little whitewashed memorial and turn right down this gravel road. And it really doesn't look like anything other than some sort of um, unpaved driveway. So uh, there's no effort whatsoever to guide you to this cemetery. In fact, at one point it was considered lost. And um, in 2002, or a little before that, actually in the late 90s, some people rediscovered it. And that's when the patients that were held or interned once at this hospital that were still alive got together, formed a commission, and attempted to do something to memorialize the people that had been interned here, uh, probably in some pretty horrible ways for a very, very long time. Once again, no markers whatsoever, no clear indication of this at all. You have to know where to go and then know to turn right here at this clearing, which then leads you to the cemetery number one. So here we are at the original cemetery number one, which has approximately, if not exactly, 677 people interned in it. And at one point, this cemetery would have looked very much like cemetery number two, where all of the markers were nothing more than standing stones with numbers on them. But in 2002, when the effort was made to clean up and memorialize this, most of those were removed in the idea that they would be replacing them with actually names on headstones. So you'll see, when we come down to here, this would have been grave, 118 and the number is still there and while the money was still there they were able to place an actual headstone with a name and dates sadly the money ran out and while the numbers remain most of these still do not have named headstones so as i said in the process of trying to clean up the cemetery they pulled all the original strictly numeric markers they did leave behind the little numeric discs, so for the people that were unable to be identified, there's still at least a number there. And for the people they were able to afford to put in actual headstones, they've done that, of course, as well. But you can see here by the pile that each one of these stones represents a human life that was lost here at the Danvers State Insane Asylum. And these stones are now just piled here in what really looks like nothing more than a refuse pile, which is exactly what this cemetery was treated like for so much of the duration of its existence. Now, this place has been renovated and turned to high rent luxury condos. What does it cost to live in a spooky place like this? Anywhere between $2,500 to $4,500 a month to live in a place where you want ghosts, this is how you get ghosts. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Halloween special here on InRange TV. It's a little off of our normal content, but this story about the reality about humans and marginalized people and how they're treated is something we do talk about here on the channel with some regularity. And if you like, which is not the word, this sort of content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It's your dollars that keep this project alive. No masters, no gods, no overlords, no corporate sponsors, just you, the viewer. Thanks for watching.